And in each hour that goes on, there's the growth rate in this case is going to just keep going up and up and up, which means that at some point this is probably not going to be realistic. Otherwise, this, the bacteria would just be everywhere because this is a parabola that keeps going up and up and up forever. So often you have 10 hours, yeah. You have these equations, but they only make sense over a specific time period because then things don't work out anymore. Show that the number of organisms will always increase. Is this realistic? So we've got our equation, we've got our derivative, right? n prime of t was 6t plus 15. And if we solve for this when this is equal to 0, because we can use our first derivative to find out where something is increasing or decreasing, and move this over, we're going to get negative 15 over 6 is equal to t. According to our number line then, and negative 15 over 6 is the same as a negative 5 over 2 or negative 2.5. And if we plug something in before negative 5.2, it's decreasing. And after negative 5.2, if we plug that into our derivative, it's positive, so it's increasing. How does this show that it's always increasing? Don't I have a part of my graph that's decreasing? Right, we, we, the part of the graph that's decreasing is before zero. So if we take time zero as the start of this, after time zero, after time equals zero, the function is always increasing. So again, now we have to take the context of the problem in mind. We think about, okay, it doesn't really make sense to go back in time. After time equals zero, this function is always going to be increasing. Is this realistic? Probably not. So we have things that follow this. Bacteria does grow at a certain rate and you can graph that and I don't know if you've done experiments in biology where you watch things grow but what happens at a certain time? Bacteria runs out of food or runs out of space and then it can't keep increasing forever. So then you might get into a little bit of chaos theory where things go chaotic for a while and a lot of real life examples have that where it follows a, an equation for a while and then things go bad. I'd like to know where this lab is and what they're thinking. Why would you want to keep a population of mosquitoes? This actually exists in Winnipeg. They release them every... <laughs> Otherwise, we wouldn't have mosquitoes. And then we, as a people, wouldn't be defined. So every, every summer, they go to the lab and release mosquitoes so that Winnipeggers can be true Winnipeggers. <laughs> wow, they're crazy. <laughs> yeah. But they're like healthy mosquitoes. That's why we have no malaria or anything like that. So find the growth rate of the mosquitoes after five days. Again, this is mosquitoes in time, so all we have to do to find a growth rate is find the derivative. What's the derivative of E? It stays the same. This is a chain rule, so what's the derivative of the inside function? 0.09. If we 
simplify this. We get 22.5. So after five days, plug in 5, 22.5. Thirty-five point three, and write a statement then. the growth rate is 35 mosquitoes per day. This is pretty calm. They would have to really start this lab early in order to get the population high enough to service all of Winnipeg. And our last example for today temperature things temperature things tend to work exponentially as well if you bring something hot into a cold room it'll start cooling off really quick at the beginning but then take a long time to actually become the room temperature so here is an equation that represents this happening and when we look at this equation and you think about your exponential functions and your transformations. Again, anytime you see an equation, try to remember all of your stuff that you've learned about transformations. This graph, e to the negative 0.2t with a 90 in front and a plus 34, would have an asymptote at 34. And at time equals 0, well, e to the 0 is 1. So 90 plus 34, we have an initial hot temperature of 124, and this exponential function is going to be decreasing and slowly approaching room temperature. So if you left that hot metal bar in the room long enough, it should become the temperature. So we've got time in minutes, temperature in degrees. Find the rate of change of the temperature of the bar 10 minutes after it was placed in the room. How fast is it changing temperature? Well, to find a rate of change of anything, we find our derivative. Our derivative in this case chain rule again. And at 10 minutes, We've got to be careful in these things, too, that all of our units are the same. So this equation is in minutes, and they ask after 10 minutes, so you can plug in 10. If they said after one hour, you'd have to plug in 60 because the equation is in minutes. So at 10 minutes, if we plug in 10 into this equation, Ten minutes, the rate of change is negative 2.4 degrees Celsius per minute. So if that hot bar is, you know, 124 degrees at the top, and at this point it's just changing 2.4 degrees per minute, it's not changing that fast. I probably wouldn't still, uh, depending on what the temperature is at 10 minutes, I mean, you could plug that in too and find out at 10 minutes, 34 plus 90 e to the negative 
point two times ten. About ten minutes, it's already down to forty six degrees. So it'd be forty six degrees at ten minutes, and you could expect that another minute later, it's going to go down another two point four degrees. It'd still be pretty hot at that point, but judging by the slope of the thing, it's changing a lot right at the beginning. I mean, if we plugged in time is zero right now, at time is zero, it's changing at 18 degrees Celsius per minute. So it's really cooling really quick at the beginning, but it will cool s more slowly the closer it gets to its temperature. Which makes sense, right? If things are farther apart in their temperature, they're going to cool quicker or heat up quicker. And then later on, it's going to go at a slower rate. Yes? So the yeah, hypothetically, it never reaches that. Eventually, it gets so close that you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between the two. But according to the equation, it would still always be a little bit warmer. They would still always be trying to bring each other closer. Now, the other thing that isn't part of this equation, okay, it's not like, let's say we had a hot bar in this room. And this room, for whatever reason, for this experiment, we decided to set our room up at 34 degrees. So it's already hot, and I bring in a hot bar. And it starts following this equation. What's going to happen to the room, though, as well? The room is going to, so we all decide to do this experiment. We bring in a whole bunch of hot bars into this room that's already 34 degrees. This room is going to get hotter as well. So the bar is going to approach the 34, but the room is also going to be coming up. So it would be very hard to, I guess you could have some sort of room that kept sucking out hot air and adding cold air to keep it at 34 perfectly all the way through, but that would be difficult to do.